So you've opened up YouTube, you've seen my video thumbnail, and you've decided to click on it. But was that a coincidence? I'll tell you after this. In the late 1800s, former Italian king, King Umberto I, went to a small restaurant in Monza for dinner. While he was there, he was absolutely gobsmacked by just how much the restaurant owner looked like him. And after a bit of conversation, it turned out that they were both born on the same day, March the 14th, in the same year, 1844. They'd both been born in the same town, and they both got on to marry women called Margarita. And the coincidences don't stop there. The restaurant owner opened his restaurant on exactly the same day that King Umberto was crowned King of Italy. And on the 29th of July, 1900, King Umberto was informed that the restaurant owner had unfortunately died that day in a mysterious shooting accident. Now he barely had time to let that sink in because on the same day, he was then himself shot four times by the Italian American anarchist, Gaetano Bressi, whose name I've just mispronounced. Interesting stuff. Now, if you're a regular Baldy Cats viewer, then welcome to Myth Mondays. This is the first in a new series of videos where once a month on a Monday, I get to release a video talking pretty much about whatever I want. Um, now, I hope you find it interesting, but if you don't, don't worry. I'll be back on the Conspiracy Cats channel later on today or tomorrow with my usual content. Now, today we're going to be looking at coincidences. And more importantly, what science has got to say about coincidences and are they even real? We'll get more into that in a second after this. This story here in The New Yorker from 1932 tells the story of Anne Parrish. Anne Parrish was a well-known and successful author born and raised in America. In adulthood she visited Paris with her husband and they were walking along the River Seine when they saw a small bookstall. After just a moment of looking at the books she noticed the book Jack Frost and Other Stories which was a childhood favourite of hers and she bought it for just one franc. Excited by her find, she eagerly sought out a chair she could sit on and take a look at her new purchase. But when she opened it, she saw this inscription. Yes, it turns out that somehow she bought her old childhood book. So what actually is a coincidence? Now, most people don't actually take the time to reflect on the fact that very, very low probability occurrences happen thousands of times in our daily lives. And that point is well made here in this quote by Richard Feynman. I mean, what actually was the chance that he would have passed the car with the license plate ARW357 on his way to work that night? It would have been spectacularly low. Yeah, of course, the chances of that are fantastically low and it might never, ever, ever happen to him again in his entire life. And similar things happen to me. What would have been the chance when I released this video that exactly five days, four hours, 20 minutes and 30 seconds after releasing this video, it would have exactly 36,725 views. And what was the chance when I started making that video that it would end up at being exactly 13 minutes, 53 seconds long? So what flips that switch? What is it that starts making us see these very low probability occurrences as coincidences? Well, I think most people would agree that we define a coincidence as being a remarkable event. And this means to be a coincidence, these low probability occurrences must hold some sort of emotional value to us. And of course you may have heard of psychologist Carl Jung who coined the term synchronicity to describe a particularly meaningful coincidence. But to be meaningful these occurrences need to have enough of an impact for us to mentally set them aside from all the other low probability occurrences that are happening in our everyday lives. And when it comes to getting noticed, there's nothing that does that quite like money. Now, I'm sure you've all heard of this person, Evelyn Marie Adams. No? Well, she's a lass that works down with local butchers, but coincidentally, it's also the name of somebody who won the New Jersey Lottery twice in consecutive years. Right, so it's time for you to do a little bit of thinking now. What do you think the chances of somebody actually winning the New Jersey Lottery twice? I'll give you some thinking time while I tell you this. The assassination of Franz Ferdinand was one of the key events that led to the First World War, which ended on Armistice Day on the 11th, of the 11th, 1918. Oh, and the car that was driving him on the day he was assassinated had the license plate, you guessed it, AI 11118. Fascinating. So what did you guess? What was the chance of somebody winning that lottery twice? Well, the local press had experts in who calculated that the probability was anywhere between 1 trillion and 17 trillion. But as Dr. Deconis and Mustella pointed out, that's the right answer just to the wrong question. Now, Diaconis and Mustella were mathematicians who worked for Harvard University and they carried out all sorts of ultra important work. In fact, it was Diaconis that realized that it takes seven shuffles to fully randomize a deck of cards. Never let it be said mathematicians have too much time on their hands. So if one in 17 trillion was the right answer to the wrong question, what was the right question? Well, we'll get to that. 
Now, De Economist and Mostella analysed an incredible amount of data based on coincidences that had been reported to them. They then used that data to categorise types of coincidences and I've summarised those groups here. Now, almost as if I've planned it, you will see in this video one of each of those types of coincidence. So please leave in the comment section where you think you spotted them. But you can have this one for free because that lady winning the lottery two years on the trot was an example of an event which is statistically more likely to happen than most people could possibly imagine. You see, the right question wasn't, what are the chances of Evelyn winning the lottery twice? The right question should have been, what are the chances of somebody winning the lottery twice? And based on the law of very large numbers, when we have a big enough population, some very bizarre things are gonna happen. And they're not gonna be coincidences, they're gonna be statistical probabilities. So when the correct question was asked, the question of, what are the chances of somebody in this population winning the lottery twice? The answer came back at a mere one in 30. So what other coincidences can maths help explain? Well, at the 2014 Football World Cup. Oh, and if you're watching from America, when I say football, what I mean by that is football. Get it right. Uh, anyway, there were 32 squads of 30 players each. However, remarkably, in 16 of those 32 squads, we saw players that shared the same birthday, even though there were only 30 players in a squad. That's 50% of those small squads containing players that shared the same birthday. And these teams in red here are getting a little bit cocky because they have two players sharing the same birthday. Now, as a teacher of nearly 20 years, I'm no stranger of standing up in front of classes of 30 plus pupils. And it has constantly amazed me just how many shared birthdays there are within each classes. And I've often found it a wonderful coincidence, but can maths explain it? Well, let's find out, shall we, and introduce our star player, Hootle McThirdnipple. Well, if we can assume for a second that Hootle isn't completely made up, then he must have had a birthday. In other words, the probability of him having a birthday is one. But I can represent that as 365 365ths to represent the days of the year. Now, the next player in the squad will also have a birthday, but what are the chances that his birthday will be different from Hootle's? Well, the chance is 364 out of 365. Now the chances of the third player along having a different birthday to the first two is now only 363 out of 365. And we can keep on doing this until we reach 23 players. And when we get to 23 players, we find out there is around about a 50% chance of two of those players sharing the same birthday, which certainly stops this being a meaningful coincidence. Okay, so there's something we probably knew anyway. Coincidences aren't some kind of magic, but in fact, some coincidences aren't coincidences at all. Now, not all coincidences are coincidences. As pointed out by this article in Psychology Today, it references the fact that over the past 50 years, we've had an increase in caesarean sections, but we've also had an increase in chronic diseases like inflammatory bowel disease, type 2 diabetes, and asthma. But the writers of this paper, published in Science News, spotted that coincidence and wondered whether there was a correlation. And after a lengthy study, they determined that babies born vaginally do actually have different gut bacteria than babies born via caesarean section. And this is due to the fact that babies born vaginally undergo a bacterial exchange as they go through the birth canal. But what if some coincidences aren't coincidences because of some sort of correlation? What if they appear to be coincidences based purely on fate alone? Well, to answer that question, I'm going to ask you a different question first. How many flat earthers do you think you would need before one of them could successfully guess the order of playing cards in a deck of 52 cards? Well, let's take our flat earthers and ask them just to predict the first card. And I think we'd all agree there is a 1 in 52 chance of them making that correct prediction. So we would expect 51 out of every 52 of our flat earthers to make the wrong prediction. And assuming they could find the exit, we'd ask them to leave. Now, when it comes to predicting the next card, 50 out of every 51 of the remaining flat earthers would make the wrong prediction, and they'd also be asked to leave. And if we follow this train of thought all the way through the deck for every single card, using a simple probability calculation, we would figure out that this is the chance that one of our flat earthers might make it through the full deck without making a wrong prediction. And that means that we would have to start off with this many flat earthers to give ourselves a reasonable certainty that one of them will make it through the deck. But unfortunately, the entire population of planet Earth only makes up this percentage of that number. Okay, but what if we had an infinite number of people, and not flat earthers, but an infinite number of normal people? Then we should absolutely be able to find somebody that could correctly predict or guess the order of cards in a deck, making it not a coincidence at all, 
just an absolute certainty. Time to meet Alexander Friedman, the legendary physicist. Now his equations are way beyond me, but essentially he looked at the ability of the universe to expand and the ability of the universe to resist that expansion. Now from this he determined that there were three possible shapes of the universe, an open universe, a closed universe, and a flat universe. And it turns out that an open universe and a flat universe will expand infinitely. Well, an infinite universe would have an infinite number of planets, an infinite number of people, and assuming that the laws of physics stay the same all the way through the universe, there'll be infinite versions of you. And that means that you've already guessed the order of a deck of playing cards an infinite number of times. It means that you've failed on the first card an infinite number of times. It means you've got to the 50th card before making your mistake an infinite number of times. It means that you've won the lottery every single week for 20 years an infinite number of times, but it also means that you've refused to buy a ticket for every single one of those weeks an infinite number of times. It means you've danced with Tom Hanks on top of the world's largest piece of cheese on toast an infinite number of times, and that you've beaten Usain Bolt in the Olympic 100 meter final an infinite number of times using a Zimmer frame. And in a universe like that, there are no coincidences. Everything that can happen is bound to happen to one version of you. But when that does happen, that version of you is going to see it as a special event. An analogy might be me walking out to the field next to my house with the intention of bringing home a blade of grass. Now, I know with absolute certainty I'm going to come home with a blade of grass. But if you were that one blade of grass in the field that I plucked, you might be sat there thinking, what are the chances of that? But what if the universe isn't infinite? Would that mean that some things just wouldn't happen? Would that mean that some events just wouldn't unfold? Well, the many worlds theory of quantum mechanics suggests that every time there's a particle interaction, the universe branches off into as many universes as it takes to cover every single possible outcome of that interaction. And that, well, that means this. So again, we end up with an infinite number of versions of you where nothing is a coincidence and everything is a certainty. So was it a coincidence you clicked on this video? Probably not, no. But some people really like the idea of synchronicity. They like the idea that something has happened that's special to them. And keep hold of that feeling because for every special thing that happens to you, there is an infinite number of people out there that it hasn't happened to. Goodbye.